DJI's latest drone is a bold step in a new direction. FPV, or first person view, refers to the way that the drone, or quadcopter in this case, is piloted. Rather than watch the quad as you fly, these goggles show you a live feed of the camera, so you see what the quad is seeing. The FPV segment of the drone market is heavily repair focused, and for good reason. These quads fly fast and crash hard. DJI is selling some repair parts, but that list pales in comparison to the extreme modularity of DIY quads. Hopefully DJI has tweaked their usual design formula to account for that extra crashability, because if so, this quad could be a beginner-friendly option for an otherwise difficult hobby, if you can afford the price tag. To understand what makes the DJI FPV unique, you need to understand how the DIY quads work. This is my first FPV quad. It's a lot smaller than the DJI FPV, but it has all the components that an FPV quad needs. Under the blue housing is a flight controller. This is the brain of the quad. Unlike cinematography drones, this board isn't home to an array of fancy sensors or artificial intelligence processors that help the quad fly itself. FPV is all about the experience of flying. The pilot is in full control of every little movement the quad makes. The board inside this drone has a motion sensor, a low power CPU, and then a bunch of voltage regulators and solder pads for attaching motors and other components. In addition to the flight controller, FC for short, an FPV quad needs an electronic speed controller, ESC for short, a camera, a video transmitter, a radio transmitter, motors, and propellers. Oh, and then a controller and some goggles. So these parts make up a typical FPV quad. The list is short, but jam-packed with abbreviations and technical components with very particular compatibility. All that can be pretty intimidating for a newcomer. Now let's look at the new alternative, the DJI FPV combo. This $1,300 quadcopter kit includes everything you need to get out and fly FPV, all wrapped up in the familiar DJI polish. It's got four obstacle avoidance sensors, a one-axis gimbal and a shock mount for the 4K camera, a time-of-flight sensor and an ultra-bright LED for automatic landings, and some customizable accent LEDs. All that, of course, in addition to the necessary motors, propellers, and a big old battery that gets you about 10 minutes of flight time. The FPV combo kit also comes with version 2 of DJI's FPV goggles and controller. DJI sort of revolutionized the FPV market a couple years ago with the introduction of the first version of these goggles, which worked with a special FPV camera and video transmitter that you could add to just about any hobby quad. More on that later. Before we begin our disassembly, I'll remove that battery along with all four propellers. The first step in our journey is to use the hex key DJI so graciously provides to take out four screws in this plate around the gimbal. Our driver ends up being a bit quicker, so I'm actually going to stick with that from here on out. Next, a few more screws hold down the clear canopy. DJI throws in an extra canopy in case you break this one or in case your favorite color is neon green. With the canopy gone, four more hex screws and a cable stand between us and the camera and gimbal. It's nice to see that the camera system is pretty simple to replace since this assembly is likely the first thing to break when you crash. A replacement will set you back 129 US dollars, which is pricey, but that's a lot less than $700 for a whole new drone. Let's hope the arms are also this easy to replace. Before we get to the arms, let's hunt for some silicon. This metal fin plate might just look like a cool body piece, but its real job is thermal management. Four screws pull off the plate around it, then two more hidden in the battery well hold the spreader down. Underneath is what looks like the electronic speed controller, and all these soldered connections here are the motor wires. A quick note on solder connections. Typically, we take a soft stance against them, since in many consumer devices, they can act as a barrier to repair because not everyone has access to soldering equipment. A great example of this is the joysticks in PlayStation and Xbox controllers. In drones, particularly FPV drones, Solder connections often make the most sense because they provide the best connection to power for better performance from the motors and the antennas. Thankfully, these solder joints are nice and big because judging by the construction of the legs, I'm guessing you'll have to desolder the motor wires here to replace a broken leg after a crash. To avoid this video being 40 minutes long, we'll spare you some of the next steps. Getting to the flight controller boards was a complex dance of unscrewing, prying, and guesswork. Thankfully, these boards aren't likely to need replacements, but if they ever do, let's hope Future iFixit has written a guide for them by then. The DJI FPV quad does a lot more processing than most hobby quads. These flight controllers are evidence of that extra complexity. To keep the design compact and aerodynamic, DJI designed these two boards to sit in a V-shape with a single copper heat pipe to cool both of them. The little fan and plenty of thermal paste help keep things as cool as possible under the canopy. Finally, let's look at the legs. After the camera, the legs are the parts most likely to take the full force of a crash and need replacement. Unfortunately, the legs aren't quite as simple as the camera to replace. 
I start by pulling out all the screws on the bottom of the right leg, then there's one more big screw inside the battery compartment. That loosens the leg, and then from here, if those wires were desoldered, I think you'd pull the whole leg off, motor and all. That said, arms and motors aren't even on the list of available spare parts yet, so a broken arm may just land you a trip to DJI headquarters for a repair anyway. So about FPV goggles. For a long time, FPV pilots have used low resolution cameras paired with an analog video transmitter to keep the latency between the camera and the video feed in the goggles at a minimum, which is a necessity for high-speed flying. The result is acceptable, but the analog video feed to the goggles leaves a lot to be desired. Then in 2019, DJI released their FPV Air Unit and Version 1 goggles, which, thanks to some special compression sauce and DJI tech, were able to use a digital video transmission with a low enough latency for high-speed flight. It was a big deal. A digital video transmission has several benefits. Longer range, a cleaner, higher resolution feed to the goggles, and the ability to record and transmit from a single camera. These version 2 goggles look the same as version 1 and seem to only have a couple minor changes under the hood, but we never tore down the version 1 goggles, so we're excited about them anyway. First I removed the black metal plate from the face of the goggles, then all the visible screws underneath in hopes of pulling away the light gray housing to get to the meat of the goggles. No luck though. A few minutes of investigation reveals some screws hidden under the velcro of the face pads, and our guesswork finally gets us somewhere. The first few layers come up, revealing even more layers and more screws. Fast forward some more, and I'm finally able to remove the optics from the housing, but before they're fully freed, a few more screws hold down a metal plate covering the antenna connectors. From here you can see how the IPD, or interpupillary distance, adjusters work, moving each lens unit back and forth individually. The two display panels on the back are 2 inch 144Hz panels, which is a slight upgrade from the 120Hz panels in the V1 goggles. And thanks to some new antenna hardware, these V2 goggles are able to play back a live video feed from the drone on those screens at up to 810p. So the DJI FPV combo is a genuinely interesting quadcopter kit. It's expensive, but it provides a beginner-friendly, all-in-one entry to an otherwise complex hobby. It's really unfortunate that that friendliness doesn't extend to the repair experience. While the gimbal and the camera were pretty easy to access, basically any other repairs are probably going to have to be done by DJI. Whether that's because you don't have access to the parts, or you don't have the tools or patience to complete the overly complicated repair, the end result is the same. More money spent, more time spent on the ground. Contrast that with the hyper repairability and widely available parts of do-it-yourself FPV quads, and you've got a pretty tough sell, even considering the steep learning curve of non-DJI FPV flying. That doesn't make this thing any less fun to fly though. 